on an outset, I'd like to thank Emirates scholars and the founders, Mr. Dr. Faraz and Dr. Fawaz, for this wonderful three days session on civilization and tolerance. Now, you know, this topic, if we can go backward, we can go into the, from the birth of the civilization and have a deep dive into our current status of civilization and then foresee how we can take it further and foresee how the future civilization is going to act upon. The cultural diversity is different than the religious diversity. One religion in different places will have a different cultural practices. Their faith may be the same, the roots of their faith may be the same, but the cultural, behavioral methodology can be different. Even in the Arabian Peninsula, there are certain cultural differences, cultural practices. In, in different parts of the peninsula, you can see different. And if you go to India, it's a huge country where you see cultural differences in every 100 kilometer. Every 100 kilometer, language changes, dress changes, food habit changes, their, their, their uh, cultural activity changes, and so as the looks keep on changing as you go from north to south. So how does this cultural diversity derive from? When we talk about this cultural diversity, one of the root of this, which I examined and I explored during my research and my work when I was doing in water conservation, and especially in India. When I was doing my research on water, I found that it's the groundwater which is affecting the humans, which is affecting them and building them what they are. The groundwater is the source of different cultures. We humans are 70% of us are water, so we are mobile water tank. And what we consume, we become. So water of Eastern India is different, water of Western India is different, water of Northern India is different, and so as water of Europe are different and water of Africa is different. That's why, you know, somebody is, is, is habituated to drinking one water, he'll always drink that water. And water has affected us and made what we are today. So this cultural diversity and water has a very close relationship. While doing this research in water, one more aspect of cultural behavior which I found and which I will share with you in my Indian research, uh, when I was doing this research in India, that in the, in the Hindu culture, when you go and visit them, anywhere you go to their office, to the factory, to their works or anywhere, they offer you a glass of water. I'm sure everybody must have experienced and those who have visited India must have experienced or even in touch with any Indians visiting them, you must have experienced. Now I was, this is a is, is an accepted culture all over in the, in the Hindu culture. Once I was invited in, uh, in, jo in Jaipur in one of the interfaith conference and I was one of among guests of honor sitting in the audience and on the dais were, it was an interfaith conference. All the different religious heads of different sects were there on the dais. Maybe one of the gurus of one of the sect was absent and they didn't want any seat to be, wait, to be empty. So they came to me and said, can you join us on the dais and, and, and be one of our speakers? Looking at my attire, they thought that I, I can fit as a, as a guru, but I told them I have a very shallow knowledge on religion. But they insisted and I had to go there. They all were very, very eminent 
religious leaders on the on the stage. So the master of the ceremony said, "It will be injustice for me, so to introduce this eminent people, eminent gurus rather. So I will request them to introduce themselves." So each one of them introduced themselves that they are from this set and they have this millions of followers and none of them had less than 20 million followers. When the mic came to me, very, with very humbleness I got up and I said, I am no guru to anyone, but the only thing I know is I am a student. And then, you know, while in that, in that conference, among discussing with the other scholars, I asked them this question. That while doing my research in water, I found that this is a custom that you all offer water to any visitor who come in your house or office or wherever. They say, yes, one said it's a culture, it's a parampara, it's a sabdhyata. These are all synonyms of culture in different languages. But I said that every culture has a meaning. The culture is based on some fundamentals. And of course, not to test their intelligence, I said, I, I have my research, if you allow me, I will, off, I will explain you. Then I explained them, and then I, that, you know, in, in the Hindu Vedic, there are four Devs. Dev means they are incarnations of God. So one is their parents, they consider as a status of God. The Gurus, who are teachers, they consider as a status of God. Not as Almighty, but as a status of God. Like how we say Arbab. Arbab God has come from Rab. So uh, to our boss we say Arbab. Arbab is uh, derived from Rab. It's not that Allah Subhanahu, but as a is is a we are, we are getting a, a revenue or, or an income from him. He's treated as so. Guru is treated as God. Parents are treated as God, and also the visitors are treated as God. So in there in the Sanskrit cloak there is a phrase which is called Atiti Deo Bhav. So any visitor who comes to us is in place of God. So they offer water to them because this is the most precious thing in the house they have which they offer to the person visiting. So water is most precious element of nature. If you chronologically put all the elements of nature in order, water comes on the top. There is a life without air, fishes live in water. There is a life without earth, fishes again fishes live in water. There is a life without sunlight. The species which lives 10 kilometers beneath the surface in the ocean, they are blind, the sunlight doesn't reach there. But still they survive because of water. So, and every holy books have mentioned the importance of water. In Quran it is written that every life has emerged from water. So, water is the most precious thing I'm offering you first. So when I shared this, this my, my research to them, I got a lot of blessings from them. Then I explained, in, in Islamic culture, we offer water to the person only who asks for. So it looks contradict, but it has the same values. Many a time, it's not because the, in Arabia has a scarcity of water. Zamzam can feed not only Arabia, it can feed the entire world. And at the, at the amount of, of uh, extraction done per minute, you know, it, it can feed the entire world with that. So it's not because of the scarcity of water. Because if somebody offers you water and you say, sorry, I don't want. It is an insult to life. It is an insult to water because of its hormat and because of its, its dignity of water, you know, we only give to a person who asks for. And how much we give? Until his thirst is not quenched. It is well documented that, you know, even in the fight, even if there is a war, now the wars are digital, but you know, earlier it used to be with the, with the swords and, and spears. So even if in the war, if you are fighting each other and the, your opponent asks for water, you have to stop and give water if you have. And similarly, as much as his, his thirst is not quenched. So this cultural diversity is, you know, based from the groundwater. The groundwater is different every place. Everywhere you go, you will find a different difference in the groundwater. And the water has, is very sensitive. 
even the waterborne disease are more more ferocious than you know the airborne disease so the water plays a very important role and few years back it was in 2006 dr musaru he presented a paper in world water council world water forum in mexico city i was present in that uh, forum in mexico and uh, i was there in that uh, Uh, where he presented his his research that water reacts, the miracles of water. In that he presented that if you give a glass of water in the hand of a child, it will react differently. If you give a glass of water in the hand of a criminal, it will react differently. If you see water with a smile, it will react differently. If you see water with anger, it will react differently. If you cannot see with the from the naked eye. But you, when you put this into a, 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 a crystal photography, you can see the distortion of the crystals and the formation of the crystals that can tell you uh, who has touched this water. So water affects our body extremely instantaneously. So the cultural differences are always there. Now the. the sensitivity sensitivity of this is that you know there are rivers flowing from different countries and different states in one country earlier the when the birth of the civilization happened it was at the bank of the rivers because those were the places where the potability of water was not there in that era so the civilization was on the, on the bank of the river and as we had the potability of the water the civilization spread in the, the inner part of the countries and the continents the ground water predominantly we have it from the lakes and from the aquifers you know are such that every place you know you will have a different effect on that person when i visited you know in the in the deepest part of africa when i went for the research of my water i found that you know due to scarcity of water the woman walks 20 kilometers one way 10 kilometers one way 20 kilometers back to just fetch one bucket of water which is only good enough for cooking and drinking so the cultural differences are transmitted and translated from different parts as the water has flown diversity is always there and diversity is always good if we have a bouquet of of flowers with one color it will not look so good as we have a bouquet of flowers of the different colors as my previous speakers have mentioned many thing about the diversity and acceptance of tolerance we have an in islam in one one and a, and a preaching of from our high priest it's not tolerance is not enough if so, it's tolerating somebody is not enough or if somebody has done wrong to you forgiving him is not enough you oblige him you go and do ihsan to him and this is extremely well documented from the from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you know it is it is a very known story that He used to pass from one place, and one lady used to throw some garbage on on him every day. And one day when he passed, and he he didn't realize that you know nothing has been thrown, so he thought that you know what has happened to her that this this uh, she didn't throw this, and she, she he realized that you know she was not well. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he went personally to 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 see her and ask her well-being. that was and such a impactful uh, uh, character and behavior of of uh, 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 prophet muhammad that she was uh, she was inspired to convert to islam so tolerance is always there but against tolerance you know we need to have oblige him and in this obligation many a time impacts them to turn around their decisions of of uh, envy or whatever they are against you and convert it into harmony
very recently in one of the sermons, the, our high priest uh, prince, he made a very fantastic analogy of ego. See, cultural diversity, accepting cultural diversity is one thing and not accepting the root cause is, one of the root cause is ego. Because I am egoistic, I will not tolerate or not understand or not accept your cultural diversity or cultural behavior. And one of the, this root cause of ego was explained very well by the prince of our high priest and he said that, you know, there are three root cause of it. One is envy, second is greed and third is arrogance. So if you have envy someone, you are going to be arrogant. If you have, if you have greed of something, you will be egoistic to her. Only your focus is to achieve that and you do any shortcut to go for it. And third is, you know, arrogance. So once you are arrogant, you don't accept any diversity. You are only confined in your shield and within that shield, you think everything is good. And this is the only thing which is right. It's not my way, your way, or highway. It's my way, your way, and there are many other ways. So this, understanding this diversity, understanding this cultural acceptance, and moving forward to create a, a tolerant society is, you cannot have a more better example than the country of UAE. In my speeches earlier, I used to say that, you know, if you go in Times Square, in a day you find one person from every nationality passing from there, in New York, in Times Square. And I say that extended Times Square as a country is a UAE. Every nationality has a presence over here. Within that nationality, diverse cultures have a presence over here. Within those cultures, different ethnicities also thrive and this has become a role model for the world to achieve and this diversity and sensitivity, how we can achieve is a, with this role model, you can create a harmony where, you know, the world can be a better place to stay. Once again, I thank, you know, uh, MRA scholars and uh, the wonderful brothers, Dr. Fawaz and Dr. Firas, for giving me this opportunity and making me part of Emirates Scholar to deliver my, my thoughts on cultural diversity and sensitivity. And let's create a better future for our children to, to thrive further. Thank you.